My name is Stephen Cho, and I'm an oral surgeon from Coronation Dental Specialty Group and Cambridge Memorial Hospital. Two questions have been asked in this case. One, is there a reliable way to predict a high risk of inferior alveolar nerve injury when extracting a wisdom tooth? And two, is there a reliable means to predict which wisdom teeth will become partially impacted before root formation is complete? The overlap between the impacted tooth root and the radiographic border of the inferior alveolar nerve canal is a long-held standard for predicting the risk of nerve injury. If no overlap occurs between the root and nerve, then the risk of injury is low. When overlap does occur, there has been a recurrent debate about which findings predict a higher risk of injury. In a recent large case control study, the best predictors of nerve injury include patient age being greater than 24 years and a Pell grade B or C impaction depth signifying a deep impaction. There are also five radiographic superimposition signs of increased risk. The most important is narrowing of the roots of the tooth over the canal. This has been associated with a 22 times increase in the chance of nerve injury. Other predictors with lower odds ratios include darkening of the roots, deflection of the roots, bifid roots, and narrowing of the canal. In the case presented, you can see that the canal gets darker and deviates around the root. These intraoperative shots show the close association between the two structures. The tooth was split and removed from around the nerve. Postoperatively, the patient's nerve function returned to normal. Since age and root formation have an association with nerve injury, it's useful to be able to predict which teeth are likely to become impacted. The probability of impaction can be made provided there is at least one-third root formation. Traditionally, the angulation of third molars is compared with the adjacent teeth. An angulation difference of more than 35 degrees is considered to be high risk for developing an impaction. But a more reliable predictor is the ratio of crown length to space available for eruption. When the ratio is less than 1 to 0.75, the tooth has a high risk of partial impaction. Here are a couple of examples. While the rationale and indications for third molar removal are beyond the scope of this discussion, these cases do illustrate that the predictors of partial impaction could be identified several years before complete root formation. Understanding the risk of damage to the inferior alveolar nerve and the probability of partial impaction are key elements in making educated decisions about whether third molars require removal. My name is Stephen Cho from the Coronation Dental Specialty Group. On behalf of the JCDA Clinical Q&A, thank you to everyone who participates in the discussion.